All right, I have a few baits here that I was using this past weekend out kingfish fishing offshore with the kayak. These hooks didn't stand up very well to a couple of the kingfish that I was targeting on, if you can tell here. It's kind of hard to see, but the hook itself actually bent out of shape. It was bent worse. I tried to bend it back with the pliers. The same thing with the trailer end or the tail end of the bait. So this probably isn't the best choice of treble hooks for this this bait, I think I need to change it to a little bit heavier gauge uh, wire. But a few of my kingfish rigs, if you can take a look at, well this one's perfectly fine. I started off with a treble hook here. My stinger hook was a treble, ended up turning out to be just a single hook now. So start off with a treble both the head and stinger end, but the stinger end lost two of the prongs uh, during a fight, many fights with a kingfish. Uh, landed about, or hooked 15 kings, and I lost about eight, 10 kings or so. Um, landed about six of them, so I need to get better equipment to hold up. This is a very thin gauge wire. Um, the treble hooks seem to develop a lot of corrosion here where they meet at the center. Um, I think that's another reason why why the trebles, treble hook failed. It's something that I try to want to get away from um, to help better the fish since you can only keep two here in Texas. I want to try to be able to release any fish that I catch as quickly as possible. Troubles makes it very difficult to do something like that, so I'm thinking about switching to something else to give me a little bit better edge on hooking, keeping a fish on, and being able to remove the hooks fairly quickly. That's what I'm going to be showing you today. I know there's a couple videos out there uh, that depict on making kingfish leaders uh, so many different ways. Usually I'll skirt one like this uh, with a nice duster on it, duster rig, and a plain Jane one like this one. It's just personal preference. Um, sometimes, sometimes the the kings being um, pelagic fish, they have very large eyes, can uh, make out a lot of detail if the water is clear enough. So sometimes you kind of have to be careful on what you use, not use too heavy of wire or things like that. That doesn't attract too much attention to where it doesn't look too natural. So we'll see what we can do. One of my favorite lures, favorite colors. I love the green, the patterning, the uh, fluorescent coloration that it does have. Um, I had these, actually I have another one here. This is a clown color. Uh, same same size hook, same gauge. Um, but if you notice that this wire is not your traditional steel leaders, these are actually titanium leaders. So you can probably see here in the background, I have the not to kinky nickel titanium leader wire. Adds more resilience to more bites. Um, doesn't stress over time as much as regular steel leaders do. Uh, this has some elastic capability to it, so it does stretch and give that elastic property you want when hooking a big kingfish or hooking any large fish for that matter when you're trolling especially so that's something that I really like about this leader it says here that you can knot it I don't knot it and it shows you how to knot it I don't go that route but I go ahead and use crimps and I'm going to show you in this video how to incorporate using this nickel titanium leader with your to help protect um, your expensive tackle like this you know these cost 15 18 dollars a piece um, protect them from toothy critters whether you're offshore or fishing in lakes like musky and all that kind of stuff you want to use a titanium leader like this something very very useful something that i really like it's a little bit more expensive a lot more expensive but i found it to be a lot more useful a lot more practical when it comes to the type of fishing that I do so I really enjoy it it's a very great product um, I'll show you how that how I incorporate that 
and tie it into uh, my leaders. I'll, I'll be showing you how to set up a lot of these kingfish leader rigs. Uh, one naked and one dressed. So first thing I want to do, I want to reuse my duster, which is still good, and my weights. Everything else at this point, since it is crimped together, I can't really reuse. So I'm just going to snip it off. I wish I could reuse this leader because some of it is still good, like this portion was still good, but I can't remove the hook based off of how I actually looped and crimped the wire onto the hook. So I'm just going to get rid of that. Get rid of this. I'm going to keep my swivels, so that's something that I do need to keep. I do need my weight, so my weight's still good. I have to unfortunately get rid of the uh, this section. Like I said, I can't remove the hook without, well, even if I was able to remove the hook because it has an eye uh, slit, um, I could remove the hook, but placing a new hook on would be almost impossible without undoing the eye of the new hook and closing it back up. So I'm gonna have to start from scratch all over again, my weight. I need my swivel back. My swivel. I'm gonna probably make three or four. I'm just gonna make an adjustment though. Instead of using trebles for my stinger, I'm gonna try something new that I've kind of read about and wanted to try out. I'll probably be able to test it this weekend. Hopefully I can get a nice video. Well, you can kind of see there that a kingfish actually bit into the lead weight and left an indentation there's some some nasty 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 teeth my duster rig it's it's a nice nice duster rig when you when you get into some dirty water it helps kind of add a little bit more flash to your bait that you're using sometimes you need that flash in really murky water okay i don't think i have very much left of this water in this pack so, first thing, let me put it through the sole first. I should have enough wire for it to make at least one section. I know you can probably just loop it once, but if you notice after some time and you catch a fish, it does add a lot of stress at one localized point if you just loop it once through the swivel or any loop for that matter uh, whether it's a swivel or hook so what I learned um, I've never seen anybody do this from what I know I've tried to look up different ways of making or using this nickel titanium leader without forcefully putting it on a point uh, like the steel wire that you would normally run a haywire twist. Um, usually it's just one strand that you're putting through the eye of a swivel or a hook. Um, that's a lot of stress on one point, I think. Um, just to kind of allevi alleviate some of that stress, what I do, let's see if I can do it here. is I just make a simple my first the first thing I'm going to do is make a simple overhand knot just the normal way you would tie anything, I guess. And you notice it starts doubling up the wire and adding some rigidity. So this is the first thing I do. I try to get this as small of a diameter of a circle as I can. So I'll try to bring that as small and tight as I can. The tighter you get with the double loop or double strand wire, the more rigidity it has and doesn't put so much stress on one point. 
So once I have that, do you notice that this piece is still third up? And I'm going to run that through. So make a double overhand. Let's see if we can stick it through there one more time. So technically, it's two overhand knots. You can see that there's two strands of wire going through the eye of the swivel. Adds a lot more rigidity when a fish hits. It's not stressed just on one single point of strand of the wire. It's on multiple strands, in this case two. When I made my first rigs, I didn't know what size crimps to get and it kind of was a trial and error and I wasted some of my first set of wire but now that I have this down it should be pretty easy place my first strand I mean my first crimp I tried to get it as close try to get it as close as I can to that circle where it won't reach anymore. Take my crimper, and this is probably not the way that you're supposed to crimp it, but this is just all I have at hand in my method of crimping. It has worked, thankfully. I'll just make a few kind of light press crimps to hold that into place double overhand knots to make a loop the eye of the swivel goes through both strands or the, both strands go through the eye of the swivel adds more rigidity strength and when a fish hits as I've caught probably about five fish, five kingfish already on this rig and look at that loop. It's still holding it almost a, almost like a circle, an ellipse if anything. Um, it's not pinned down at one single point so it adds it relieves a lot of that stress which I, which I want. <clears throat> so I try to alleviate this problem by doing it this way. It never creates that kink in the wire that creates that weakest stress point. So that's something useful, hopefully. Um, if you ever want to do something like this, or use this wire, um, I find it very effective for nickel titanium. Wire anything that has elasticity or some memory to it. Nickel titanium is a very memory uh, smart metal, I guess you could say. Um, it has some memory to it. Just gonna take that off. Add my second crimp for reassurance. It's kind of hard with these pliers or these uh, crimps for electrical work. These aren't the crimps that aren't supposed to be used for it. But I find it, if I just take my time, I don't over crimp. It actually works out very well. So just make sure they don't slide, don't doesn't move with my hand. It's crimped on really nice, and what I can do now is add my oh but this is gonna be my dressed one with a skirt. I add my skirt and then my weight. And I made this mistake my first time that I did this and I wasted some. I'm gonna place my crimps on already since I'm gonna be closing this section or this loop. Oops. I'm gonna add my crimps already for my turning of this smaller gauge to a thicker wire that makes the hook, circle hook, so I can try to get a hook set in the corner of the mouth and not in the body, 
not in the gill plate, not in the eyes or around the mouth. Always want to try to, I'm trying to hook my foot, my fish now in the corner of its mouth so I can have the proper ability to fight the fish correctly and try to release that fish if I need to. So that's important for me. That's just some personal preference. This first hook doesn't matter the way that you place it in directionality. Um, since we can change it if we need to, I guess. I guess if you place it this way, it would be upside down. It doesn't really matter. This first hook. The second hook does matter. You want your hooks to be facing the same direction. So both hooks should be facing up or facing down. Um, so let me show you this again. So just a simple overhand. First overhand loop or not. Just want to tighten Bring this down. So see my loop, just wanted to get it as small as I can. Oops, small of a diameter as I can get it. I'll run that again to make another, another knot some reassurance so two overhand ties double strand through the eye of the hook adds rigidity adds strength remember I told you it was you need to place your crimps previously ahead of time because if you don't there's no way of getting your crimps on first crimp goes on push it as close as you can to the circle so double loop through the eye two crimps held into place nice and tight this is my first end of my my rig I need to add the trailer so this is a size 2 odd hook and my stinger trailer hook is going to be a 4 out hook, a little bit bigger. Um, usually your stinger hook is the one that hooks the fish, sometimes you do hook one on the uh, head end, but the trailer, you want it running and the hooks in the same direction, whether you're trolling your bait um, hook down or hook up, uh, you want both of them in the same direction. So. This is this one becomes a little bit harder to do, a bit trickier. Add attaching your stinger wire and hook. Where is it going to attach to? Some people would just attach it to the previous loop or the eye itself. I like to try to go through both of them. That just makes it a little bit harder to get this right just because of a lot of the resistance so let me see if I can get this right the first time without messing it up so if I run this through my first overhand loop both the both the eye and the previous loop that's what I want so cinch this down small as I can get it Small loop, 
insert the other end for the second overhand loop. It's through. So my new stinger wire is going both through the previous loop and the eye. So just adding some more resistance uh, just in case if something were to fail. If the hook were to fail, for instance, I don't know why the hook would fail, the eye quality control, I don't know, something. Um, if the eye ever failed, if it were to ever open up just slightly and the wire were, were to come out of the port where it's crimped or pressed, the wire is still connected to the front end of the wire that holds the weight that is connected to my line. So I can still reel in the fish. I'm not saying that, you never know. Um, you know, especially when you're fishing tournaments, you'll have weird things happen. Every, everything that could go wrong, would go wrong. Everything's crimped, doesn't move. And this is the important part. You want your hook facing the same direction as this hook. So if I have this one facing up, I need to place this hook in this direction and tie it off this way. So the hooks are facing both directions, whether I want to fish the bait this way or fish it reverse. This is how I prefer the direction of my hooks to face. I don't know if this makes a difference. I'm sure that it does. I don't know what that difference is. I've never ran my hooks this opposite direction. I've always ran them the same direction. So let's, let's just find out and give that a back. Three, uh, point hook. Hook should be. So, okay, hooks facing down. Both hooks are facing the same direction. I'm happy with that. And close that diameter. Diameter of the circle. Come back. Come back through with an overhand knot. Well, it doesn't really make a knot, it's just, I guess, to double the wire. I keep calling it a knot. But it's a similar way if you were doing an overhand knot. The same method. Put my last crimp, my last pair of crimps on. Hold it as tight as I can. I think that's good. So hopefully, they should be facing the same direction. They are. If I were to hold this up under its own weight, gravity. The directions of the hooks are facing the same way, which is what you want, or what I want in this case. This is my my version of a kingfish leader, kingfish rig, whatever you want to call it. Um, nickel titanium wire, or the leader material. Um, alteration, different way to show how to add your loops around the eyes of the hooks, crimping it. So after this, you're set to go. I'm going to make about three more and call it a day.